Yo, John Fitch here. What's happening? It's a uh, glorious Sunday, and we've got another John Fitch Knows Nothing. And we had some fantastic violence over the weekend. It was fantastic. And I'm not even talking about World War III kicking off. I'm talking about the fights. I'm talking about the sanctioned violence that went down Friday and Saturday nights here in America. Right? They're all in America? I think so. Um, but man, it's a beautiful time to be alive, guys. It really is. Uh, a lot of things are happening. A lot of opportunities. There's a lot of chaos. And when there's chaos, there's huge opportunities to make big things happen. So be aware and be ready to make moves, guys, all right? <clears throat> Don't cower in the shadows. Be prepared. Be prepared, make moves, get it going. Oh, I like that. Wholesome hyperviolence. They were good. PFL, BKFC, and the UFC. I don't think I, other than the uh, Bellator PFL card, I haven't really watched much of it at all. Uh, and there were some really good fights. There were. There's some really, really talented guys, some really good fights. Uh, we're also, though, seeing the blending, the blending of the mesh of PFL and Bellator together. So we're getting some of those, um, those, those dogs, some of those dogs that were fighting in Bellator, uh, crossing over and challenging the, um, it's kind of an unknown, isn't it? Isn't the PFL kind of an unknown? There are some good fighters there, we think. But some of them we haven't seen up against, you know, high-level competition in the UFC or Bellator. So it, it's, it always has been a little bit questionable. Am I wrong in saying that? You don't know. Like, you're like, oh, that person seems really good. But I'm not sure yet, right? Because you have to... Uh, you have to see inner inner uh, competition. You know, you have to see the competition. You have to see the guys who should be similarly ranked independently fight each other. But we don't get to see that because of the restrictions on the market and um, kind of robs us of that. So for this whole time, uh, we've been watching PFL, or if you've been watching PFL, you don't really you don't really know yet. Right, you kind of have an idea, but it's hard to tell because you know there's not enough inner inner promotional competition between the athletes. Um, so that is a silver lining in the PFL acquiring Bellator. It does suck for the athletes. It really does suck for the athletes because it's one less promoter that can bid on their contract. You have less people bidding on your labor. Uh, you have less people bidding on your your product. You have less chances of making more money. Oh, I have a mouse in the studio who sneezed, if you heard that. It's an adorable mouse. Um, got some coffee right now. Wednesday night was a brutal show. <laughs> and by the way, loose change. <laughs> I, uh, I went to, there's a place called Aki out here, and they got these drinks called The Swirl, right? And, uh, they won't let you have more than two in the restaurant. They won't. They won't. They've had, they've had too many incidences. <laughs> so it's banned. And uh, I had two, and they'll have let you take one to go. So I had two, and we, we, we went home and had one at home, and then I did the show. Voila. <laughs> I hope you enjoy it. Uh, it, was, it was funny. It was funny. I had fun doing it, but... Uh, yeah, <clears throat> he couldn't tell. Um, but yeah, so a lot of great fights, a lot of great fights. I lost track a little bit. A lot of violence, a lot of good stuff, a lot of things I enjoy. Um, UFC 300 uh, was good, and we'll get to that. We'll start the night off with a little PFL, though. I want to see which one was this. Which is the right one? Oh, I have your results. What's this one? Sorry, guys. I'm going to share the uh, screen.
screen that I have with you. I didn't catch every single fight of every event. I did catch every fight of the UFC, of course. Um, but we'll get to BKFC first. Uh, this was the first fight I saw. Hernandez and Wells. It was a fast. It was a fast night. Fast, uh, fast fight. Fast knockout. Uh, Record-setting knock knockout, I believe. Actually, Angel OG Hernandez um, got an eight-second KO. Eight seconds. That is that is very fast. Um, that is a a promotional record for BKFC. No one's no one's had a, a knockout as fast is Angel Hernandez. So he'll be in the history books for a while for a while um with that performance. Uh it was, it was a nice it was a nice little combo. He came right off the line. Um I can't remember if it was a 2-1 or a 3-2 that knocked him out or it was a 2-3. But he landed he landed two solid punches and it was just game over. And uh it was one of those Lights turned out knockouts too. It wasn't a lot. A lot of the BKFC, the bare knuckle knockouts, typical knockout. A lot of times is the guy gets hit, takes a step back, and then it takes a knee because that that stuff hurts. <laughs> it hurts really bad when you get hit with those two knuckles, bare skin. Uh, we've talked about it before. It's a uh, it's like a, a ball peen hammer. Take tape two ball peen hammers together and hit yourself in the face with it. Don't really do that. Don't really do that. Just imagine it and see what that feels like. That's why even a jab, a clean jab to the face, to the mouth, to the chin, to the temple, like it changes people's minds about wanting to continue. Right? It really does. And I, I totally get it. <laughs> I totally get it. Like, I'm not even going to say anything bad about it. Like, yeah, man, you, you took a knuckle in the eyeball, took a knuckle in the eye socket. Ow. Like, I don't know if I want to do that <laughs> unless it's for at least six figures, at least six figures. Um, Hecker Carrera, this is a pretty good fight. Carrera looked good. Hecker looked good. Tough guys throwing heavy punches, um, but they stopped it. It was a cut. Carrera um, got out on top. He's got uh, sharper knuckles. Then uh, Heckert. He's now uh, one and one. Carrera is. <clears throat> Borga and Laner. Borga, um, this is like a stick versus a thick rock. And the stick smashed <laughs> because... She fired off some really good punches, got in close, and was just too fast. Too fast, too brutal. Gets the win. Um, 40 second, 41 seconds. 41 seconds, first round. Fast. Very quick. Ooh. All right. Jackson. Mr. Jackson. Mr. Jackson, J. Action Jackson. We've seen him a number of times. We've seen him a number of times. We've talked about him on the show. We like him. We like what he does. He's got long cool. arms. He's uh, very active, throws hard, heavy, fearless in the pocket. Fun to watch. Fun to watch. G good fighter. Um, it looked like he had a little bit of an off night, right? He still performed well. Don't get me wrong. But he he kept throwing that lead hook over and over and over again and kept kept missing. Sometimes he'd land, but I think he probably missed more than he landed. And um Adri's Wasi, Mr. Adri's Wasi was a very defensive fighter, kept moving away, kept moving away, stepping in the danger zone, moving away, um, making Action Jackson chase him down a lot of the fight. And he kept chasing him with that big lead hook over and over and over again. And the times that he got in trouble or, or uh, Wasi scored were when Jackson like came out big and whiffed. Uh, I think he would have fared way better because he's got long arms. If he would have been jabbing, double jabbing, triple jabbing with that reach because, because Wasi was trying to 
run and stay away, right? So if Jackson doesn't want to fight to the clinch, put him in the ropes and go to work with that plum, then use that jab. Utilize that jab in those long arms. I think that would have done him a lot better because then he's he's ranging that uh, better. He's getting his range better, finding it with that jab for his right hand. And I feel like he's used that in the past. But for some reason, he uh, just he kept throwing that. I don't know. Maybe he's really successful with it in camp and one to, and one to hit it. Um, or maybe he uh, saw a video and it looked like Wasi was vulnerable to that lead hook, but he just kept throwing it over and over and over again. And I don't know if that was the best thing. <clears throat> Thompson <coughs> Vasquez. Um, Vasquez dropped Thompson twice, right? Dropped him twice. 66 seconds, right? So one minute, six seconds to get the KO finish. It's just too fast, too hard. And that's what people, I think a lot of these guys, they got to understand, the fighters got to understand, and, and when you're watching it too, like it's not a boxing, it's not a boxing event, you, you know? The, the three minutes is even a, a lifetime compared to uh, two minutes. Five minutes of MMA is nuts. I still think we should have like a 10-minute first round or something. Uh, we should have We should have two rounds, 10 minutes, and um, the fight is judged on who won the fight, not who won the round. I think that that would be that would be interesting. And then uh, they should they should in, involve a crowd bonus or something. So if the crowd cheers a certain volume for the athlete after the fight, they get a bonus. I think that would be good. Uh, But yeah, Vasquez gets the knockdowns. He's four and four in the organization. Thompson was number five contender in that organization. And he falls to five and six. So you notice, like, you don't completely dominate in BKFC. <laughs> hey, you don't. It's hard to. It's hard to be very dominant. Most guys, even the top guys, have have a couple losses. You know, it's 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 like the bigger the glove is, the harder or the easier it is to keep your zero. Right, with every ounce of fabric on your knuckles, it's it's a little bit easier to go undefeated. Does that make sense? <laughs> I feel like when there's less forgiveness, it's hard to do. BYB Extreme. I have not heard of BYB Extreme. You need to be texting me about this stuff. Hamzamir, you need to be DMing me about this stuff. I shouldn't be hearing about it the first time on the show. Come on. So I, I think Hamzamir, you're saying yeah, Hamzamir saying three five minute rounds and judge the fight as a whole. No, because it's a fight. It's a it's a fight. I want to know what works. If two guys are fighting to the death, who what's going to work? I'm so I'm f so much more fascinated with the technique, the strategy, the the application of technique, and what what works and what does not work. What's consistently the most successful for every people for different body types sizes, whatever. I'm, I'm infinitely more interested and obsessed with those type of details than I am about the guy and his family story and the struggles he went through. Like, yeah, those things are kind of interesting, but like, I care more about the fight and the technique. <clears throat> so for me, I want less restrictions. I want less involvement. So if you have two 10-minute rounds, three 10-minute rounds, right? Or, or honestly, I, just, I would just say 20-minute fight and a 30-minute fight for undercard and championship. 
And, um, you know, be, uh, there's no stand-ups. There's no stand-ups. It, you, just, you fight. It's a fight till you win. <laughs> it's a fight till you win. Uh, and then it can be if you don't finish, you don't win. It's a draw. There's no finish. Nobody submits. Nobody gets knocked out. It's a draw. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. 20-minute undercard, 30-minute main card, championship fights. You fight till the finish. If you don't finish, you uh, you have it's a draw. It's a draw. I'm totally fine with that. Totally, totally fine with that. Yeah, I got with 10 wins and 30 draws. <laughs> Hey, whatever, man. Um, all right, let's get back. Let's get back. BKFC, BKFC. We we'll get back. I go, I go back. Get back. Do it all over. Can't go back. God no. Randall and Ridge. Uh, it was a pretty good fight. Little guys though. So uh, two squirrels fighting over a nut. And uh, I think he came down to a split decision. Randall got the got the nod. Fort and Brito. This was fun. It was fast. And um, Brito came out big. 40-second TKO. Uh, hit him hard off the line, put him into the ropes, and just landed a barrage of punches and kabibed him. He kabibed him. He said, he's finished, he's finished, <laughs> yelling it as he's punching the guy and he's shelled up in the ropes, uh, kind of hunched over a little bit. He got on him, he hurt him, and did not give him an inch to recover and come back. It was it was a good performance, right? Um he was coming off, right? Brito was coming off a three-fight losing streak. That's not good. That's not good. I see six and four right now. So that means he was five and one and then lost three. Man, how great he must have felt. I can't tell you. I can't tell you. Um, just dropping, dropping two in a row. I did that once. Maia and uh, Berkman. And it's the worst damn thing, right? It gets you so bad. So to go on like a three-fight streak, like you got you got to be all kinds up in your head and questioning all kinds of shit and making up stupid scenarios and whatever, you know? So to come back hard and win big like that in that situation, he must be freaking flying right now. And he was saying he's the champ. He wants to fight. Trout, no doubt Trout for the title. He's a man. He should get to he should get to be the man with the belt. So we'll see. That could be fun. Is there uh happens here? Is there uh the clinch? Is there clinch in BYB extreme or is it straight boxing rules? But uh whatever, Queens Queens of Berry rule, what is that called? <laughs> rules of Queensberry, something. Um, but or is it they can clinch? Clinch and punch. The main event surprisingly went um, the five rounds. All right, Lozano and Richmond. They throw hard. They'll sit in the pocket. They have bald heads, and they'll throw down. And they do. <laughs> and it was fun. It was fun. I think, uh, what was it, Richmond dropped him twice. Ended up getting the decision. Yeah. It was scrappy. They were throwing hard the whole time. It's one of those rare occasions where they just don't connect for the finish. It was close, though. I mean, um, you know, dropping a guy hard with a big-ass jab. It's different. It's different. BKFC is different. We've said it before. We'll probably say it numerous, numerous times. What's the trigon? Is it a triangle ring? 
That gives you a really good opportunity to corner somebody, huh? Yeah, I get that too. West Coast Millennial says Richmond was clearly the superior striker, but the other dude was tough. Yeah. And um, yeah, <clears throat> I don't know. More more volume is what he needs, but it's like in bare knuckle, more volume. Like that could – it puts your hands more at risk. Your hands get more hurt. I would think if you're landing a lot more punches, <laughs> you're like punching a bowling ball, like there's a lot of opportunity for you to actually hurt yourself with more volume. So like those tough guys, man, that's – because I fought some tough guys. I fought a guy named Kinga Ura in, uh, you know, MMA. It was just this illegal show in L.A. on a movie set. And they said they're filming a production, and that's why it was legal or something before they had commissions and stuff here. And uh, it was only two rounds. But this guy, I Kingo, he was the toughest Japanese dude ever, and I I beat him to an inch of his life for ten minutes. And um, I couldn't imagine if it was bare knuckle, if that was bare knuckle, like how hard it would be to keep hitting somebody after hitting them. 15, 20, 20 times in the head. Uh, like, I'm telling you, like, even the four ounce gloves. Uh, I've, I've hit guys from ground and pound positions so many times in a fight and elbowed them so many times in a fight. It started to hurt. It started to physically hurt me to hit them. I didn't want to hit them anymore because it hurt. Okay, so I could only imagine what uh, being bare knuckle would feel like. I, you would have to go um, way more to the body. You would you would just have to. Those tough guys would be such a such a bitch to fight bare knuckled. It would suck, <laughs> you know. Because like even if you're kicking their ass, it's like you're still messing up your uh, your hands a little bit. That's wild. All right, so that's BKFC. Let's get into uh, the the PFL. We'll get into the PFL. Jump through that. We'll go through that kind of quick, I think, because I want to get to the UFC, and that might take a while. Well, we might go longer than an hour tonight. We might. We might because we're talking, man. Let's keep talking. Uh, Mate Maddox is talking, asking about the new UFC gloves. What do I think about the new UFC gloves? I was like, uh, what I say is like even even the Olympics. Even the Olympics does not allow for one supplier um, equipment. Okay. You, you guys understand what I'm saying? Even the Olympics, okay, big international sport, all professional sports, um, they do not limit the number of suppliers of equipment. That means if you want to wear Reebok shoes in the NBA, you can. You want to wear Nikes? You can. You want to wear New Balance? You can. If you want to start your own company and have your own shoes, you can. In hockey, you can have whatever stick you want from whatever company you want, whatever shoulder pads, whatever helmet. You have those abilities. You have those rights. All right? In boxing, you have the ability to negotiate gloves what type of gloves the style of gloves your opponents get to look at the gloves and see them and approve them because you have negotiating rights in those situations because you're an independent contractor because you're the show because you're the business that matters the most but ufc forces you to wear whatever their product is mma companies force you to wear their product that they're probably profiting off of somehow Yeah, that's a that's an interesting thing, Hemsmere. B B Y B bare knuckles. I haven't seen a lot of bare knuckle po eye pokes. I haven't. Yeah, UFC has it way more than other people. Way more eye pokes. All right, PFL. I chimed in. Uh, 
around the uh there's the Marcelo Nunes fight. I don't think I don't know if I saw the very beginning of it, but um he pulled off a nice first round triangle armbar. That's pretty nice to see from a heavyweight, right? He's a heavyweight. It was uh interesting. It's cool to see heavyweights move well like that. Uh, next fight was uh, what? Uh, Adam Piccolotti and Elvin Espononza. And Piccolotti was dominating the majority of the fight. But Espinoza was very powerful. He was able to land heavy punches. Um, Piccolotti would land three to six punches for every one that uh, Espinoza landed. Maybe, maybe, maybe even, even more. But when Elvin landed, you could tell he landed. You know, when we talk about damage, the John Pitch knows nothing definition of damage. We say um, that you, you changed the behavior, a noticeable change in behavior from the person who was damaged, right? If I hit you three times in the face, but... You don't do nothing. There's no reaction. And then that's not damage. That's that's significant. maybe a significant strike because it landed clean. But damage is then a wobble, right? Like you, you see a change of behavior. You kick me in the leg. I have to change my stance to hide my leg because it hurts, right? <clears throat> Those things are, to me, are damage. Um. Piccolotti kept chasing submissions. He's too jujitsu based in his submission attacks, I believe. Right? Um, if you don't get the quick submission, I think you need to use it to get a top position so that you can ground and pound and beat people up. You got you got to throw that so you can d damage them. Uh, essentially, I don't think sustained attacks for submissions are, are good because you end up burning up um, energy. You build up, you know, your strength a little bit and you don't finish. And then that guy lingers. And if you're fighting somebody with power, some serious power, then if he, the longer he lingers, like he's still in the fight because it just takes one. One of those, those guys that have that kind of power, it just takes one. So if he continually... Is chasing submissions. He's chasing a lot of the Kimuras and stuff. If you're not getting them and doing damage, you're making yourself tired. Your energy bar is going down, right? And his is his is his is uh, his is going down too because he's fighting it off. But the power, his power bar doesn't go down. His power bar is still there. So if he's able to still land one of those big punches, or in this case, a flying knee, unfortunately, Adam kind of ducked into it also. And that was it. That was the end of the fight. It was done. He was done. That sucks to see. Yep. I I think so too, uh, Stripper. <laughs> that the um, Pride, I love Pride. Pride and the NHP stuff. Soccer kicks and he's the head on the ground. Soccer kicks and he's the head on the ground. They change everything. They change everything in the game. It does. I'm sorry. If you can, the guy goes to half guard and you can knee him into the head. Remember when Frank Tramack did that? Right? It was illegal and they stopped the fight. But like, if you can knee somebody from your back and side control, it changes things. If you can pass to half guard, you, you can put the guy in the fence and knee him in that. I finished a fight like that in Mexico because we could knee in the head in that fight. I was able to pass one leg, got into half guard, and I was able to put him in the fence and then knee him in the head until it was over. It changes everything, guys. If you can pass guard and knee a guy and finish the fight, you're going to get a lot more finishes in fights, but you're going to get a lot more um, development on ground because when that happens – on bottom, you're forced. You are forced to learn how to sweep or get up or even submit. You're forced to. Because if, if you try to just to stall things out, it's going to get too obvious and people are going to.
probably boo you for holding on and stopping the fight. <clears throat> but it becomes kind of easy to at least pass the half guard, put you in the fence, and knee you into the, the shadow realm. That is possibility. So it forces you on bottom to get up. You can't stay there. Sooner or later, something bad's going to happen. <laughs> it also uh, changes things up a little bit with wall walking and guys who kind of post and stay on their knees and hang out on the wall because now you're in a position where you can knee them and smash them with that knee. <clears throat> but also, <clears throat> right, so you don't all just think I'm being biased because I'm pro, pro grappling, right, because I'm a wrestler. Also, it gives a huge advantage to the strikers who – can sprawl, stuff a takedown, and throw a knee. Huge, right? Fighters can't take advantage of that position where you're on your knee on a leg anymore because now they can just sprawl to the right position, post, boom, knee. Fight's done. Donezo, right? You want finishes? You want um, – a very strong, powerful weapon available to the strikers so they can force the stand-up. Knees to the head on the ground. Knees to the head on the ground. I'm telling you, bro. Soccer kicks too. Force guys to have to move and get up or sweep or engage and, and sweep and submit. Right? It's the way to do it. All righty, all righty. What else we got here? All right. Uh, Rabinov, um gets the win. He he spent some time in AKA. Met him. Hard worker. Uh, went over Zalman Renfro. It was a close fight. It was a good fight. But um, Godzi, just his wrestling prowess is just too good. Too much control on top. Was able to do some uh, significant strikes, landing some good significant strikes on top. Um, Primus, former Bellator champ against Bruno Miranda, <clears throat> completely outclassed him with his wrestling and grappling. Uh, got to his back. But it's a... Um, precarious position right because we talked about this before when you are are a good grappler like one of the you know you're supposed to get to the back you get to mount get to back look for your finish but in mma it's weird right it's a weird thing because you have um right you get to that position you get to the back you get figure four you, it's a super dominant position right so if you're a jiu-jitsu person, you understand like the onus is on the bottom guy to escape and get away. But that bottom guy can just hold on to your hands and gloves and do nothing and hope that the referee stands you up. Right? Oh, in action. Stalemate. You guys stand up. So even though Primus fights to this awesome position where he's ready to finish, like it kind of looks like he's just holding on. And people start making fun of him and start booing, and they don't like that position. But it's like he's in the dominant position. The, the the responsibility is on the other guy to do something to get away because he's losing right now. And in, in jiu-jitsu, you understand that, right? But in MMA, it's not. It, it, it's weird. So it's like you have to know. We've talked about this before. And so you have to know. You have to understand, guys, if you get to that position – my thing is you got 15 to 20 seconds to finish. You have 15 to 20 seconds to finish. If, if you don't from that position, you have to start working back on top. You got to start working back on top, work to mount. And then while you're working to get on top, maybe there'll be a transition, maybe an arm triangle, maybe arm bar. Maybe something will happen that'll open up on the way. Right. And then once you're there, you got to maybe uh, post up mount hit a couple times. Look for another submission. See if you can make him pick a side and, and start to roll. Go back to it. Go back to your figure four. 
right? You maintain momentum. You keep going mount to back to mount to back, right? Like, that's the only thing. I've thought about this hard because I, I used to get to that position. I used to get to that position to be on the back. And then all guys are just holding on to my gloves and stalling, and they want to get stood up. And I'm like, wait a minute. This doesn't make any sense. Like, I'm in the dominant position. I'm winning. I'm trying to hit him and hurt him and punch him. I'm trying to finish him. Like, my mind is finished mindset. Finish, 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 finish. I'm going after it. All they are doing is holding on, fighting, defending, defending. Don't get finished. Don't get finished. Don't get finished. Stall. Stall gets stood up. I was trying to think, you know, what's the – What's the way to do this? There's got to be a way to combat, combat this, a yellow card or something. Hey, you're not actually trying to escape. You're just waiting to, for a stalemate to get stood up. But I couldn't, you know, any I mean, you interfere with the fight from the outside. I don't, I don't like that. So it really comes back onto the athlete. So you've got to make that decision, right? You've got to maintain momentum until the finish. So if you get to that body triangle, you've only got – 15, 20 seconds, 30 seconds top, then you've got to transition to a new position in order to do damage or finish from there. That's the only thing I can think. It's the only thing I can think of. PFL commentary. Yeah, I heard about that. Sean O'Connor said something about asking uh, the guy what steroids he uses or what he got his steroids from. Oh, man. Yeah, that was Primus. Primus looked good. Um, heavyweights, more heavyweights. Or no, it's light heavyweights, light heavyweights. They look like heavyweights, so. Uh, Double Dov. That's my new nickname for him. Dov Let Zazan Yagmashiradov. Yagmashiradov. I'm calling him the Double Dov because his beginning of his name, his first name is Dov, D-O-V, and the last three letters of his name is Dov. Okay. So I'm I'm officially nicknaming him Double Dove or Dove Squared. Dove Squared works too. I like that. Dove to the second power word. He looked great. Jacob Nadeau looked like a uh, a monster. Looked like he was going to be hard to deal with. But uh, Dove to the power of two was too much man and that beard and that hair mwah, chef's kiss he looked remarkable right he came out and uh threw some heavy punches kicks he looked good man he looked good um what is this Oh yeah, and and uh, and Antonio Carlos Jr. Simon Beyong, uh Carlos Jr. with a pretty quick submission takes him down, gets to the back, puts him out. This is a little bit of a letdown, <clears throat> I must say. Hey, it's light heavyweight. So, Josh Silveria fought um, Boy Sai, and that dude was like a a, a champ. One of their playoff champs at welterweight he moves up two weight classes to light heavyweight and loses because he gets taken down in like the first minute or so and uh post his hands guys posting is dangerous you don't really want to post on the mat you fall off your scooter you trip over your feet and your shoelaces you, you don't want to post tuck and roll tuck and roll you gotta go with the momentum you gotta go with it you gotta try to you know, scramble off the roll if you're, you know, in a fight and you're going to the ground. When you post, bad things happen. So, um, said it, boy, posted and dislocated his thumb, effed his thumb up, <sighs> waved it off. Um, yeah, and then uh, that was the fight. It was a fight. I almost forgot about it because it was so fast. Uh, Dufort. Overwhelmed Bernal. Second round submission. I think it's just too much. Uh, too much volume. <clears throat> this was a big fight. Clay Collard, Patricky Pitbull. Um, uh, Patricky was kind of just 
hanging out and looking for big shots. I, I, I don't know if he was in that great of shape. I feel like if he would have put more pressure on and, and chased the chase the the damaging shots he landed, because he did land some good shots down more, maybe he could have got him out of there. But Clay Collard was just so tough, so tough. He took some big shots, stayed in there. And his volume, he has a lot of volume. He throws hard, straight punches. And it looks like he has deceptively long arms, really deceptively long arms. He doesn't. He doesn't look. If you just look up at him, if you look at a, look saw him in the gas station, you wouldn't think he would beat the fuck out of somebody. But he's tough. <laughs> he's tough, right? Uh, I have not seen him fight before, but as the fight progressed, I became more and more impressed with what he was able to do and how he was doing it. As Patricky is no no joke. This guy took some some serious leather. He ate some serious leather. Sh showed no sign of being damaged or slowed down, and kept kept the pressure, kept the pace, and overwhelmed Pitbull in the end. Wilkinson, we got a couple more. Wilkinson, Wilkinson's awesome, man. He's really good. He's big. He's strong. It was a good, good fight. Um, first round TKO. You could almost say that fight was a breeze. <laughs> Get it? Because he, he fought. He fought Tom Breeze. Dad joke. That was for my sons. I hope someday they watch his show back and appreciate it. <laughs> oh, where we at? Where we at? Last fight. Last fight. Finally. Of the PFL, and then we'll get into we'll get into three hundred. Which, yeah, guys, we're probably going probably going a little bit later tonight. I'm at to send out for uh, another another Pabst. Oh, Collard isn't that great on the ground? Is that the word? Uh, AJ McKee submitted Collard in twelve seconds. Okay, okay, it is mixed martial arts. And sometimes, guys, forget that and turn it into small glove Muay Thai. Small glove Muay Thai. And I have some stuff to say about the <laughs> UFC, too, with that regards. Uh, but uh, Kassan Ganaway over Pelosi. Pelosi had some really cool wrestling attempts, trying to get inside, uh, putting him in the fence, stuff that I used to do. Because a lot of guys, they suck. When you put a guy into the fence... They can't sprawl their legs back, which leaves their hips high. So that um, Iranian or backdoor, you know, that John Smith type of movement. Uh, shout out to John Smith, who just retired from Oklahoma State, I believe, last year. One of the most legendary coaches in the sports history and in and, and the competitors, too. But um, – that, that coming up the back door, it, it works really great. I don't see enough guys that utilize it because you get to a certain angle and you drop down. They can't really hit you, right? And they can't, uh, you know, they wouldn't even be able to knee you if you were able to allow them to knee because the way they are in the, the fence. And you can come up out the back. Uh, Impa is such a great athlete. He's able to keep his balance and fight those takedowns. And even when he got taken down, he's able to fight back up to his feet so that Pelosi couldn't do much with it. And then he's just landing, you know, clean punches in between all of the movement and scrambles. Impressive fighter here at light heavyweight. I would, I would, you know, cross promotion <laughs> guys. Wouldn't you love to see, uh, Someone like this, guy light heavyweight, maybe he fights Pereira. You guys would never want to see that. You guys would never pay for that. Really? You sure? You sure? Y'all sure about that? I don't know. Seems like it could be a little interesting. It doesn't cut weight for 205. Yeah. Yeah, he didn't, it doesn't look gigantic. I was thinking that he looked like he could make 85.
Mate Maddox is saying that Ian's translator works for the Chinese government. Maddox, it's a communist country. They all work for the government. They're all owned by the government. <laughs> okay? Where do you think a big portion of the, those fighters' paychecks goes to? It's not, it's not their belt. It's China's belt. That's how communism works, guys. You don't own anything. It's, it's not her belt. China owns the belt. It's the country's. It's everybody's. It's everybody's belt. Bold. Sucks we won't see it. Hamas Bear says Impa will beat Pereira. He'll wrestle him and choke him out. We're being robbed. We're being robbed then, aren't we? Bum, 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 bum. UFC 300. Let's go. Let's go. I guess you could say the other stuff was a warm up. Perhaps. Okay. Okay. First and foremost with UFC 100. Okay. First, I'd like to talk uh, about how this was a great card. It was a fantastic card. But I think we need to be realistic about everything, right? I just want to talk. I'm not saying anything's bad or good or whatever. I just want to talk. Just, I'm just talking here, guys. The reason I think this card was so good and so enjoyable to watch was because of the fact it felt like a 2006, 2007 2008 card where you knew every fighter on the card you knew all of them you, you knew the last two fights right you knew them you you knew everybody on the card and what they where they were and where they came from maybe there was one or two people who might have been a little bit of dark horse where you didn't know that much about them but it was the, it, one of the first times in I don't know how long where, like, I knew who the first fight on the night was. I knew the fighters. I, I knew fights from them. I had hit, there was history of them, you know? And you could say that's just part of what's happening with the growth of things. Um, but I still think that was what was so, so cool about it, I think. Um, <laughs> kind of like uh, it was a little. It was nostalgic. It was a little nostalgic. It was right. First fight of the night: Cody Jardbrent and uh, Figueredo. And it was weird to see two guys who were like ex champs be on the first fight of the night. That's crazy. But that was that was part of the magic of this card. And still, UFC 100 was the best. But this was a great card. Um, Frederick Guerrero looked good, uses grappling. Jarbrand really couldn't get off his, his offense on his feet very much. Figueredo was able to get to the clinches, get to the takedowns, get to the, the grappling, put him in tough positions, make him work, and then pulled the submission at the end of round two. Right? Jarbrand has not been looking great 14 and six right now. Um, I, I, I don't even know where he would, would go next. I don't know what's up for him next. You know, how, how, well, I guess we'll look real time. What's his recent career look like? Loss. He beat Brian Keller, who I don't even know. He's 24 and 15. He beat, uh, Trevin Jones, who's 13 and 10. That was last year. I feel like UFC's trying to bring him back, but I don't know. Um, didn't fight 2022. Lost to Cara France. Lost to Rob Font. Beat Asunkao 2020. Lost to Munoz. So he's been lost to Dillashaw. He's had a lot of losses. And a lot of downtime since 2018, right? So I don't know. I don't know if that's a surprising loss. He seems like he 
he might not have much left in the tank. I, I'm sorry. But, yeah, it's a lot of losses. Bobby Green, Jim F. and Miller. Jim F. and Miller. Love it. Love it. He's been fighting for a long time. Uh, just gets after it. Always, always performs well. Always, always looking for the win. I like it. Bobby Green looked great. He really did. He looked great. You know, um, when he's not at the mall scaring white people, he really is a handful <laughs> in the cage. Uh, he's very smooth, switching his stance. He doesn't leave himself open that much with that. And uh, he's athletic enough still in his early 30s to keep his hands down fairly low and use that to draw people in. That's bait. That's bait when, when somebody like Bobby Green has his hands down. It could be inexperienced and the guy's terrible, or it's Bobby Green and that's bait. And he is sticking his head out there. Ooh, ooh, come on, mother grabber. Come and hit me. Come on, come on. And he makes you miss, and he tries to counter. Speed was a factor. Speed was a big factor in this fight, and Bobby Green had it. Uh, he didn't hit the gas too early. He stayed at an even-keeled pace and continually jabbed and pecked at Jim Miller's face using his jab like a woodpecker's beak in a, in a thick tree. And just bop, 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 switch stance, bop, bop, bop. He looked great. He did a great job. And uh, it was great. It was a great bounce back from his last fight. Um, but also, Jim Miller, he's also 40. He's in his 40s. So time. Is a mother grabber. Father Time is undefeated. Father Time is undefeated. He's the only fighter who's undefeated. And Jessica Andrade, um, Mariana Rodriguez, she just she just tanked her way through that. Lightweight last fight of the early prelims. This was um, put up on the T. Three hundred thousand dollar bonus on the on the T for Jalen Turner. He knocked. Hanato Maigano down. Very tough fighter. Knocked him down uh, at the very end of the first round. There's literally like 15 seconds, 14 seconds left on the clock. And instead of following him to the ground when he knocked him down, he walked away. He looked for the walk away finish, and the ref let it keep going. <laughs> the ref let it keep going. Maigano recovered. He survived the last 15 seconds and uh, was able to shake it off. The, his corner, uh, he needs to give a big wet kiss to his corner. Uh, the cut man putting the ice on him, getting him woken up and getting his cognitive senses back in the fight and ready to go. Um, and then, I don't know, man, I think this is, a, this is another muff by Turner was not kind of jumping on him early that second round, like really like trying to see if he was still with the cobwebs. Uh, Moicano was able to fight to the clinch, um, get takedown, get some work in on top, right? Force some grappling, find his way um, to a dominant position and get the, get the, get the KO, T TKO, right? His grappling prowess was was utilized to getting him uh, the W at the four minute four minute eleven second mark. Early prelims, rock solid. Enjoyed them. I, I enjoyed I enjoyed watching them. Preliminary card. Preliminary card. Sodiq Yusuf and uh, Diego Lopez. Lopez, Lopez made pretty quick work of him. Uh, round one, a minute 29. Kayla Harrison over Holly Holm. I mean, I don't know. I'm not really surprised, guys. I'm not really surprised. Holly Holm's in her 40s. She's in her 40s. She's in her 40s. Come on. I know Holly Holm's great. She she was able to, to sweep Harrison off of her takedown, off of her throw. Um, 
And that's one of the issues, I think, with judo is a lot of times there's not as much control on the throw. It's like freestyle, you know, those freestyle throws because the throw, you get the points for the throw. You don't want to get the points for the control like folk style. Folk style, you got to have the control also. So you can take advantage of a judo person's takedowns. A lot of their throws, you can roll through or use momentum to get back to a decent position. Yeah, they got a cool throw, but as long as you didn't land on your head and get knocked out, you can come out sometimes up on top. Um, Harrison, you know, when she got to when she finally took home down, she made quick work of her big elbows, got to her back, choked her. Uh, Qatar and Aljamain Sterling. Sterling looked pretty good. Qatar. Seemed a little bit overwhelmed, not as overwhelmed as he was when he fought um, Max, but decent, decent win for Sterling. He needed, he needs more though, you know, because they don't like him. They don't like him. He grapples too much. They don't like him. Winning isn't important. It's got to be popularity. So he's not popular. He gets booed even when he's in good positions. He gets booed. So it sucks, but because of the way things are right now, he's got to got to figure out a way to finish or they're always going to continue to to hold him back and keep him back from uh big fights big names titles jerry jerry and ratchet the rocket wow this was a pretty outstanding fight it was fun to watch jerry is pretty wild uh unconventional for sure got some good power um, obviously, but Alexander, he was looking tight and on point. He was looking really good in this fight. I was very impressed with him. I, I don't know if he's looked better than he did in this fight, but <sighs> Jerry's one of those guys, man. It's, it's 50, 50. He's going to get knocked out or lose, or he's going to knock somebody out because he's so wild in there. And he was able to land the big punch. Throw throw Ratchik down on the ground and and finish. Um, yeah, great performance. I think that was one of the fight of the night bonuses. And let's talk about the fight of the night bonuses right now for a second, okay? Everybody staring, stare, like everybody, like oh my god, three hundred thousand dollars, three hundred thousand dollars, three hundred thousand dollars. Like I wanna, I wanna get to. Uh, yeah, let's see if I can find it real quick. I found something I thought was pretty interesting that somebody had made a post of pretty intelligent. All right, here we go. Everyone loves math. I'll share this. I'll share this because I want to give this guy some uh, some creds. All right, this is Susie Cousy. This is good. All right. It says, um, everyone loves math. So here's some UFC math. The UFC reported $1.3 billion in revenue for 2023. There were 520 fights last year with 261 finishes. If the UFC gave every finish in 2023 the UFC $300,000 $300, bonus from tonight, it would have cost them $78.3 million or 6.2, 6 6.2, 6.2 of their revenue. You still, you still think that's a lot of money? You still think that's impressive? Seriously? It's disgusting. It's disgusting. They could have paid every person. I was going to say they could have paid every person on that card an extra $300,000 and not sweated it at all. Well, this, this person brilliantly shows that there was 261 finishes last year. You could give every one of those finishes $300,000 and it still wouldn't, wouldn't rock their boat at all. It, it, might, it might shave... It might shave a few inches off of their yachts they purchase next year. <laughs> Man. Man. Oh, man. 
man. Oh, man. <clears throat> okay, okay. Was that the only thing I had? I, thought I, I save things sometimes. When I like things, it's usually because I'm saving them because I want to see them later. <clears throat> Yeah, there was uh, there was audio recording of uh, that guy joking about Wilkinson steroids. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Um, is that all? Okay, yeah, I don't have any more stuffs. Oh yeah, we're at. All right, all right, all right. Here we go. Main card. Main card. Let's go. Let's go. Um. Bo Nickel, Bo Nickel and Brundage, and um, I'm still I'm still saying and thinking that Bo Nickel's getting pushed too too fast, too furious. I don't I don't like it. Um, not because he can't win fights, not because he can't handle himself and take things, but because he's on a new contract. Right when they signed him, they they probably I could be wrong. Speculation, of course, they probably signed him for eight fights because that seems like what they do with everybody. So they signed him for eight fights. It's probably 12 and 12, 14, 14, 16, 16, 18, 18, 20, 20, 22, 22, right? $2,000 bonuses every time you win a fight. This is like his third fight. So he's what? 16, 16, all right? That means he made, what, $32,000 for that win. And then what are they, like $4,000 for the bonus for the Venom shorts or whatever package crap? Right, so dude's making less than forty thousand dollars for a main card fight at UFC three hundred. Right, if they are putting you on the main card and they're using your name to sell the fight, they're using you in the uh, the embeddeds. They're using your name. That's why you're there. They're if they didn't need your name, they wouldn't use it. They would not use it. It's the only reason they put your name on the marquee. They use you in advertising. It's because you have notoriety and people are willing to pay money to watch you because of you and your name and who you are. That's why. Okay, don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. These promoters, UFC especially, would never use someone's name if they didn't need to profit off of it. Right? Do I need to say that again? They would not use... <laughs> A fighter's name if they didn't need to profit off of it. They would not put a fighter's face on the poster if they didn't need it to profit off of it. Does that make sense? That's why I think it's very telling that the UFC 300 poster was just the 300 in gold. No, no fighter's pictures were on it or names. I think it's kind of funny. But regardless, they still used these guys' names to do the embeddeds and all this other stuff to push them, right? So there's value. Nick, Nick, Bo Nickel, Bo Nickel brings value to the UFC. They profit. They profit off of his name, all right? And if they're putting you in the main card, you must have a lot of notoriety. You must have a lot of pull, right? doesn't even mean you're good like they did with uh, CM Punk. It just means you have a lot of notoriety. They're using your name to make money. So that <clears throat> level of notoriety you already have on your own, your own value and worth on your own is necessary for them to profit and they use you. So that's the problem I'm saying, right? That's what I want to get across is like he's getting them a lot of money, a ton of money because they're making bank. They made bank off of this event, which they used his name to make that money. And... He made less than forty thousand dollars. How does mm, how does that make does it make you feel okay? Does it really? Does it uh, really? It's like you really just like love rich people. Like I love billionaires, man. I want billionaires to have all the money. I want the billionaires to have all the money. Fuck fuck my neighbors who work hard and <laughs> like do things that I like paying money for. Screw them. I want them to be poor like me. I, I, I don't just don't get it, man. I don't get that. I don't get to understand. I don't understand the mentality of it. Uh, 
Um, but yeah, but Bo Nickel, he fight, fights well. Uh, Brundage took some risks, like which was fine. He fought hard. He was decent, decent wrestler, but not good enough. Bo Nickel was able to, you know, fight to top positions. There was a position in the fight, though. I want to talk about this because we talked about the uh, the body triangle stuff. But there was a position where Bo Nickel was on top, and I've been in this position before, and Brundage was there, and he was underneath, and he had a baseball grip on um, Bo Nickel's hand. And that's behind, like his head's behind the tricep, right? So, like, his arm's here. He can't really hit, right? It's clearly a stalling position. So Brundage is on bottom. It's stalling. There's nothing. There's no other answer to it. He's holding on to the wrist. He's not using the wrist to escape. He's just holding on. He knows he's in a bad position. He probably lost the round. I'm just going to stay here because I'm not getting hurt. And the crowd's going to boo the top guy. So I'm just going to stay here. It's such a, man, it's such a frustrating position, right? Because for some reason, the crowd sides with the bottom guy about stalling. Like the bottom guy, yay, yay, he's holding on to the wrist and the top guy can't do anything. Boo, top guy, boo, top guy. You should be doing more, boo. I, I don't understand. The, I don't understand it. What am I missing, guys? What am I missing there? That you want to cheer on the guy who's slowing the fight down and stopping it. Because if Brundage has to fight, out of the position, you have to keep working, you have to, has to keep moving. He can't just hold on. That opens him up to ground and pound and submissions. So that would actually move the fight along. If like, I don't know. I just feel like if you're holding on to that, you have to start using it to escape. I feel like the ref should immediately be like, hey, use it, use it or lose it, use it or lose it. And if he doesn't, psh, stalling, yellow card. I think we need yellow cards. I really do. I don't like the idea of um, outside things entering into the fight, but I think psychologically, if you know that there's a potential for the yellow card, that might be enough that there doesn't have to be any interference. Because if you're like, oh man, I get I get three yellow cards, and that's a or you know you get two yellow cards and then a red card, and the red card is a bonus or a, a, a monetary deduction. I think that might be enough incentive to keep guys from doing that. Charles Oliveira, Armand Tuxerian. Oliveira is a stud, man. He's so good. He's so fun to watch. He's so smooth. Fights both sides, submissions, wrestling. He's very, very slick. He's one of the greats, man. One of the all-time greats, really is. Um, Armand Tuxerian is just the young, hungry guy. He's able, he's able to get on top and be inside like he's a menace with those elbows. If he can get your head in the fence, he's going to elbow the crap out of you and uh, land some big shots. His grinding in, in ground and pound, I believe in the second round, slowed Oliveira down enough to the point where Armand could uh, get over on Charles with the stand-up. He was able to land... A lot more punches. I was I was noticing that he was getting a lot of jabs through in that third round that he wasn't able to do in the first round, and I'm I'm certain that it was because Charles had lost a step because of the ground and pound that he had had to endure. That he had to endure in this in the second. So. Armand. Armand is the Armand is the guy. The next guy. That's the next guy at um 155, a lightweight, to possibly challenge uh Islam. It'd be interesting. It'd be interesting. I still I got I gotta lean towards Islam. But I can see how uh, much of a threat and how damaging uh Armand can be in the guard. So I, I can see if he could get on top of uh Islam, how he could make it tough fight. But uh I still I still, you know, I'm leaning towards Islam. All right. Um I gotta go to the bathroom, guys. Give me 
like one minute. All right, I'll be right back. Hey yo, hey yo. All right. Sorry uh, for the slight uh, delay. But yeah, we're a little bit longer than an hour. So I'm old, man. I got, my bladder can't handle it anymore. <laughs> all righty, all righty. Then we move on up. Moving on up. Justin Gaith G. Max Holloway for the BMF title. Now, okay, BMF title. You guys kind of know how I feel about this. And everybody, just like the UFC 300, $300,000 bonus, you should be a little like, come on, motherfucker. All right? They created a belt out of nowhere. Right? If they, can, if they just create belts out of nowhere, you don't think that diminishes your the actual title? Right, and the UFC lawyers, they said that they said it to a, a, a congressman who's now a senator. They said that the UFC title is not a world title; it is just an award bestowed on the best fighter that night. That is the company's definition of their belt. That's it. That's their. That's they. They, they use world play and lie to manipulate people, but that's what it is to them. It's just. A, it's just an award. For the best fight that fighter that night. <clears throat> um, you know what? I forgot about the Armand Taxirian fight. Right? He he hit somebody on the way out. Do you guys see that? He hit somebody in the crowd on the way out. I I, I saw the video. I watched it a few times. I couldn't see what happened, but he took, you know, he would move a good few steps, like three steps, threw like two, three punches, and then moved down and then and then did one of these to somebody else a few steps up. <laughs> like the guy, the guy won a fight before he got into the fight. <laughs> oh man. All right. So Gates G Holloway. Uh, this fight, okay, man, I'm going to confuse you guys. This fight was great and terrible at the same time. Great and terrible at the same time, okay? Great because it's great to see uh, the finish. The finish was amazing. That That's what I like. That little bit, let's go right now, let's throw. Cool, okay. Um, in the last few seconds, I, I like it. I dig it, you know. Uh, it's not the smartest thing all the time, but like sometimes, yeah, go for it. Awesome. In that situation, that time for that made up title, it was the perfect thing to do. Bravo. What I don't like is small glove Muay Thai exists. Small glove Muay Thai in a cage exists. We can watch that on 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 one 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 championships, right? Haggerty, what we'll eat is Haggerty. Haggerty's about this weight. You guys think either one of these guys would be able to do a kickboxing fight with Haggerty? You think he's on that level? Am I am I out of line? Could these guys compete at that level in those um, in those fights with those type of guys? Hamzamir is saying no, right? I so saw like if I'm gonna watch high level kickboxing i want to watch the best kickboxers there are i don't want to watch you know guys who couldn't handle two rounds with someone like haggerty i don't i don't it's it's just like it's amateurish it's amateurish it is like i want to see mma it's hold and hit a little bit fight to the clinch 
Let's see a little bit of grappling, some, some, something. You get a 25-minute fight. Like, I'm not saying you have to be a ground and pound all the time. You have to be Mark Coleman. But I, it's mixed martial arts. It's the first word of all of it. Mixed. I, as a spectator, feel robbed that I'm paying to watch mixed martial arts and I get small glove Muay Thai. Am I, am I wrong in thinking that? Am I? Oh, I'm going to have to expand on this a little bit later when I talk about the main event. <laughs> but uh, I'm just... So I, I honestly enjoyed, you know, about 15 seconds of that fight. Because that's, that's the only thing I'm thinking the whole time is, you know, was it Super Leak, Haggerty? Are any of those guys... You know, could they have handled? Could could uh, you remember Diamond Decker or whatever back in the day? Could they have handled handled these guys? If was it if if it was uh, you know John Wayne John Wayne Parr was in his prime, would these guys be able to have handled John Wayne Parr in Muay Thai in small gloves? You know, like if I was a basketball fan, I'm not exactly looking to watch the WNBA. I'm, I'm gonna watch the, the best teams who are the strongest, the fastest, can jump the highest. I want to see those. I want to see that. Boo Call, Danny Bill, some other names, the guys they couldn't beat. Yeah, small gloves, low-level boxing. Like, yeah, I'm not, I don't know, man. Like, at least just take the gloves off and go do bare knuckle event. Just do bare knuckles. Why don't why can't the UFCs be like, hey, we're gonna do one bare knuckle event or one we're gonna do a mixed show and the BMF title is actually gonna be bare knuckle boxing? At least that would make sense. At least makes sense, right? At least that would make sense. But um Gates, she's a warrior, absolutely broke his nose like in the first round. Most guys are done. Most guys are never. <laughs> they're never gonna they're never gonna survive a bro I, you know i've had a broken nose multiple times and it's just it's miserable it's a miserable experience um he got broke his nose and then he got poked in each eye uh dustin gaty is one stud he's a stud man nothing else to say about it but he's a stud um max holloway also a stud just a stud he looked he looked good the whole fight his striking looked good the whole fight but at the same time, you know, I don't think I don't think he beats Haggerty. Risen ten minute rounds, soccer kicks. That's good. That's good. I just don't. I don't know when to watch him ever. I don't know when it's ever on. It's hard to find those things sometimes. Most times. Um, Weili Zhang and Yan Xiaonan. And I mean, I don't really have much to say about this other than. Can you tell that they really, 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 really want Chinese market? They're 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 so Stan Marsh. This fight was so Stan Marsh. You guys remember? You guys remember? I remember when uh, Stan Marsh took Tegrity, took his Tegrity Farms product to China. But that was just the whole vibe, the whole the whole thing. I was saying. Oh man. But yeah, Zang, Zang wins. Uh main event, Alex Pereira, Jamal Hill. And what I was saying earlier about the Gaethje and uh Holloway fight. You know, why are we watching kickboxing? Why why are you as a you know, you're as a mixed martial artist, I want to be like this guy that I'm going up against, his thing is Muay Thai. He's a powerful striker in Muay Thai. Knocks a lot of people out. But that's pretty much all he has. Pretty much all, all he has. He has not demonstrated competency in, in jiu-jitsu. He gave, gave him his black belt afterwards. But there's 60-year-old grandmas who get black belts nowadays. 
I, I don't know. If you show up and you pay your money, you get a black belt. Um, much like Taekwondo used to, is, you know, like <laughs> you, the, the what people in jujitsu used to make fun of Taekwondo about. That's what jujitsu is now. It, it's crazy. Um, a lot of, a lot of diminished <laughs> black belts out there. Should you at least have like you should at least have like a a gray belt or something that's like a an honorary black belt. Like yeah, you showed up and you did everything, but like you're not winning any matches. <laughs> something on that level. I don't know. Uh, but he hasn't demonstrated. He hasn't demonstrated great jujitsu technique, whatever. So like I, I can't go on. Oh, he just has a black belt. I, I'm not going on that. There was no demonstration of it. His wrestling was did did not demonstrate any level of competency. So I'm gonna go into this fight, and I'm like, "Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kickbox him." <sighs> what? What? Like, what? Why? 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 Shoot a double leg, press him, put him in the fence for a second, make him a little bit tired in there, make him clinch, lean on him, see see how those arms and those punches feel. You know, after he's gassed out because he just had a clinch for two minutes. And you're pulling his head down. He's not used to having his head pulled down. He gets tired. He takes that breath. <sighs> you see that. Then 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 stand up. Then stand up. Throw him, start throwing punches, try to knock him out. I, I don't understand. I don't understand. I just I don't get him, man. Yep. Kepsta says uh, Muay Thai by UFC promotion. They have the money. Strikers are the money makers. It makes sense. Yeah, they could. Could do it. Uh, they're trying, Hamzamir. They're going to they're gonna try their best to try to get two Chinese guys fighting for a belt. Um, but yeah, so Hill decides to forego uh, attacking any weaknesses of Pereira and decides to go headstrong into his strengths. Uh, it wasn't, you know, bad. They're kind of still feeling each other out, you know, fight ended at 314 in the first round, but they were still feeling each other out, pecking low kicks here, things there. Um, I think. Out of everything, guys, this is what you really have to take from this fight. You guys who are uh, up and coming fighters, maybe amateurs, enthusiasts, right? This is what um, happens, or this is why wearing a steel cup, a steel tie cup tied on correctly is very, very important. Unbelievably, extremely important. Pereira received a kick to the nuts whack from hill solid you heard it you heard a punk everybody heard it her being said oh because everybody heard it there was no question there was foot to cup right but it was a a steel cup that was put on correctly <laughs> right if you put on a steel cup and wear it correctly, you can take a big shot. You can take a baseball bat to the nuts. You're fine. You're fine. That's why I get I get upset. I get angry at guys who get hit in the nuts and, and oh, it hurts. Oh, I'm like, yeah, dumbass. You didn't take the precautions necessary for it not to hurt. Wear the steel cup. Put the steel cup on. Tie it on tight. That's the answer. Pereira did. He had it on, tied it on, was not injured from the kick. Bunk. 
it went. And he said, nope. Nope, don't stop. Did not break his concentration. Did not break his focus. And uh, speaking with my girlfriend, we are in agreement. We think that's what makes him good. Good as he is at what he does. He has extreme focus. I have extreme focus. I've seen my dad have extreme focus. Certain people out there have extreme focus. It's it's that lion, right, looking to to kill the antelope. You ever see your cat getting ready to pounce on on something, right? At extreme focus, a bomb, a gunshot, something else could go off, but there's nothing else. There's nothing but you and that thing that you're focused on. I think I think he's got that. Pink Pereira's got that. That hyper focus. He got hit in the nuts. Bunk. He said, no, Herb, I got it. My nuts are fine. My nuts are exquisite. Please, sir, step back. <laughs> right? I don't know if that got into um, Hill's head a little bit because it was a little break and it was a little – it was a break of routine. You know, a lot of times in a fight, you get into a rhythm, right? And that rhythm uh, can turn into momentum for one guy or the other. And if you can break up that rhythm, break up that momentum, the other guy can take control. That might have happened. That might have happened at that moment. Um, that, again, it's Hill's fault, though, for not resetting himself. If, if he at all felt a little bit like whatever, he should have he circled, circled all the way out and <sighs> reset himself. Right, re enter, start over. Um, but no, he kind of stayed in there. I don't know if he's a little bit confused or what. If that that breaking concentration for one second allowed prayer to, to come up with that, that that shook, that uppercut hook, that shovel hook. Um, and it's just boop. He almost gave me a white flash, it landed so cleanly. Actually, it didn't land cleanly, it was like scraping the knuckles but it was just so much power hit him so hard still with a grazing uppercut and it's it's true man it's the ones that you don't see and I, he did not see that at all he didn't see it coming as the truth patio muay thai cups are uncomfortable but they work once you get used to it it's fine it, it sucks but it's like you, you you either get used to tying a string up your ass crack. It's a G-string. You're basically tying a G-string on, right? Because you tie it around your waist, right, like a belt in the back. And then you go up your crack with the other rope and tie it to the top string. Tie it on tight. Um, it takes some practice to do it by yourself. If you got a good corner man and you trust him, you can have him tie it on for you. I was always took care of my stuff myself. Um, but... That cup does not move. It doesn't slide. doesn't move around. Like, I can hit it, punch it. Like, it's good. It's good. I might get a rope burn on my asshole. Seriously. You might get a rope burn on your asshole, but your nuts and your future children, they're safe, bro. They're safe. And in this fight, what could have been a fight-ending type of situation, right? He gets clipped in the in the dick. And, oh, it hurts, and it's agonizing, and it keeps hurting and doesn't stop hurting. And now he's thinking about that. And now that hyper-focus that he has that wins a lot of fights for him is gone. Opens him up to bad things, maybe. But he takes care of his equipment, puts his equipment on correctly. His equipment takes care of him and protects him. He gets baseball batted in the nuts. He's fine, he says. Stop. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. I don't want him to have breaks. And that was something that I always believed and always thought, and I've talked about a lot in the past in interviews, things like that, wearing wearing the cup correctly because I don't want that guy to have breaks. I've been kicked in the nuts before, kept going, didn't give any signal that I got kicked in the nuts because it didn't hurt because I had my steel cup on, and I didn't want to give that guy a break. I, I You know, there's... there's there's times that I think guys will kick somebody in the nuts because they're tired. And and they just want a little break. Like, oh, if I kick this guy in the nuts, I'll give him five minutes, and then I'll get a five-minute break. <sighs> like it happens. Uh, 
But um, yeah. I think um, did I uh, oh that's what happened. Let's see if I missed anything. But yeah, that was uh, a cup tied appropriately saved him. I'm I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that's that's what it was. Um, I think we've pretty much covered. All the things. We covered all the things, I think. All right, all the big fights. What'd you guys think? What'd you guys think of the show? Huh? Was it your favorite favorite hundred? Hundred fights. <laughs> I still think. Uh, I still think, one hundred was the best. Yeah, he's got a. He does. He he's got a powerful. He's got a powerful, um, left hook. It is. He hits that thing hard. He turns that over hard. Aspinall, yeah, they're talking about him maybe going to heavyweight. Like, I, man, it's it's the thing, guys. I feel like I feel like USC is making a ton of money right now, but they're they're losing steam. They're losing steam. They're losing their soul, really. You know, if if Pereira. They're they're so desperate for big fights and so desperate for for stuff you know to to market that they have to move Pereira up eighty five to two hundred five and then to heavyweight because they don't have any other matchups that people want to see. Are you serious? They, they got to go through these big gimmicks. That's what that's what's going to have to happen. This is like this is one of the best cards. This might be the best card they've had in a long time. You know, start to finish. There was something interesting in about every fight. Even even the the women's fights that I'm not really keen on, they were good, right? They were, because even though I, I I don't I care that much to watch the women's fights, I'd still rather watch a women's fights than any other sport. <laughs> I'd rather watch women women fight two women I've never heard of fight before than than watch an NBA game. No thanks. No thanks at all. I'd rather watch an a all-women's jiu-jitsu tournament than uh, a basketball game. But it's not my first choice. The, the men are just bigger, stronger, faster. Right? And I'm sorry, but usually more technical. So I just I want to see the best. So if there, there's, a, there's women out there that can beat a man... And beat the top men, then okay. But until that futuristic day <laughs> happens, like it's just not as interesting. I have no problem with people doing what they want. It's great that it exists, but it's not my preference. It's not my first choice. If we had a choice, you know, if they had an all female card, we probably wouldn't watch it. And I don't know if many other people would either. Just honestly, not, not not trying to hate on nothing. That's like people are allowed to like what they like. There's plenty of people who love the NBA who don't watch the WNBA. There's plenty of people who like the you know soccer stuff and don't watch women's soccer. I don't think you should be scolded or make to feel bad for liking what you like and not liking what you don't like. You're a free human being. <laughs> feel free to like what you want. Good for you. Okay, let's finish with that, Hemzamir. Shale Sonnen getting to the Hall of Fame because of his fight with Anderson Silva. Um, that's it's, it's really dark. It's really dark that that's a fight that they would put in 
the uh, Hall of Fame. Shale Sonnen was full of so many performance enhancing substances that he got tested positive for. It was unbelievable. It may have been the most steroided fight in the history of MMA. Seriously, that fight with Cher without his steroids, Cher without cheating, never happens. That doesn't go that way. The greatness or whatever, it was all performance-enhancing drug-fueled, 100%. He wasn't a great fighter who performed awesomely. He was a drug user who cheated his way to losing miserably in the third for fifth round. Like the steroids helped him do good for a while, and then he lost <laughs> because he, he he doesn't know how to defend a triangle joke. <laughs> oh my goodness! <sighs> yeah, man. That's a good that maybe maybe that that's a fight that should have been Hall of Famed. Okay, I'm sure she was still gassed up. It was in Brazil, so they probably gave him a pass. I'm sure so they've given plenty of people passes for their steroid use. Uh, Anderson said, uh, saying when Anderson had broken leg and gallbladder surgery, and they were going to cut him <laughs> if he didn't fight Shale. That fight showed how great Anderson is. Like, yeah, this guy was all banged up, should have been fun. They treated him like shit, put him in such an awful position, wanted him to lose in front of his home people. And he still he still comes through and smashes. It was. That was a marvelous performance. It really was. Yeah, Shell has a TV show to promote. He's uh he's a dancing monkey. He sold his soul to some people. And you're gonna you're gonna see him involved in some humiliation rituals in the future. So like when you see like him doing weird shit, he'll show up in a show in a dress or something, you know, put on lipstick and kiss a monkey or some some kind of weird stuff. Um you'll know why. <laughs> you'll know why. Oh, he fought. Was that in Vegas? He fought in Vegas. I thought he fought. I thought he fought Anderson in uh, Brazil once. Okay, Bonner and Okami. I got gotcha. you. All right, guys. That was a uh, man. We did a power. We did a power show tonight. We had a lot of fights to cover. I wanted to go in depth on them and speak on them as much as I could. Hope you guys enjoyed the show. Um, appreciate you. I have. Uh, I have a new program. I should probably share my new program. I just put up a new program. <clears throat> for you guys to check out. I'm going to put it in the chat. We go Rockfin here. Put it in the chat. Um, but yeah, guys, I went to Texarkana and I did a seminar. It was fun. It was a fun seminar. I did a seminar, Texarkana, and um, we went over some fundamentals, right? It was some double egg stuff right we worked on uh closing the distance hitting a penetration step getting to the double leg finishing and getting to smash right it's a thread i put it together as a thread so you can um 
start working on a way to close the distance and put your opponents on the ground, right? Uh, useful for BJJ. He could help you in wrestling and uh, MMA, right? So make sure you guys uh, check that out. Maybe I'll put it up on sale this week. Sign up for the newsletter, guys. Sign up for the newsletter. I put stuff out on the newsletter and uh, have sale opportunities there quite often. All right. Um, thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate you.